I was in charge of, uh, well, ver everything. I was the creative, well, I did all the casting, did all the, you know, supervised the writing, um, and uh, basically just ran the ship. And they had done an episode without me. See, Nardi Gary Nardino still had an attitude about or it, or at least was too embarrassed to not, uh, uh, you know, to, to keep me away. And uh, they had shot it, they had hired a staff and a, a bunch of producers to do it, and it was a disaster. It was like they had never seen the show. So Gary, at that point, who had told me that he was gonna hire me to do it, but again, picked his fights well, said, I ain't gonna fight with Nardino about this, you know. I mean, I, if I was him, I wouldn't have either, you know. Uh, but then I got the call and I was told that Gary really forced me down Nardino's throat. And I came in and turned it from a show that ABC was ready to pull the plug on to a show that they got hot about and wanted to promote. And I was a hero. They carried me around on, on their shoulders. Same network that ostensibly hated me. They loved me. And uh, the bottom line is, I, you know, I thought the shows were very good. We recycled a lot of the scripts and made them better. We actually, we went back to first drafts that, see, a lot of things got shot down because of money. There was a joke I wanted to do. We redid the, one of the courtroom shows on the, on the original Odd Couple where uh, the, the ticket scalper show. And um, we, where Felix always is his own lawyer, and we always found a reason for Felix to humiliate Oscar on the stand. And the humiliation in this case was to get Oscar to admit how hard he tried to get a date, that this was, this was a, not a ticket meant to be scalped, it was a ticket meant for his date. So in our first draft, we had a joke where Felix turns to the gallery and says, will every woman who, Oscar, who was in this courtroom that Oscar Madison asked out for this date please rise? <laughs> and this motley collection of women stand up and check each other out. And I don't know, I think it was funnier because it was a whole bunch of black women. Um, and it just got the scream of all times. And they cut that joke in the original version because it was considered a $500 joke to hire all those extras just for that joke. And we were shot down. So it proved to me that you indeed can go home again. That was my most pleasant memory of that show. The shows were good. There's nothing wrong with rewriting uh, stuff. You know, the remakes are not necessarily a bad idea for movies, so why should they be a bad idea for TV? How did you update the scripts for an African-American cast? What were, the, what were the changes? Reluctantly. <laughs> I didn't want to update them much at all, but the cast had problems, particularly Ron Glass. Ron Glass was not a good idea. He had, a, he had a, a fear of looking ridiculous. Now you're playing Felix Unger. Felix Unger is a ridiculous character. But he wanted all the humor to be based on how ridiculous Oscar was and him going And that just left no way for Felix to be funny. So we were constantly going at it over that. And, I and simultaneously, as I was working on this show, the Laverne and Shirley money from syndication started rolling in. And it gave me a new attitude about working. I mean, we're talking about tons of money. And I said, okay. I've proved my point. 
I'm an individual. People know what I do. The network loves me. The studio loves me. They love what, what I do. I don't have to prove anything to anybody anymore. So I only want to work on things that I thought were good. And I only want to work on things that involve a pleasant work atmosphere. Now, I thought the new odd couple was good in spite of the, what Ron Glass wanted. But eventually, it just became too much of a hassle to deal with them. And there were other problems that were, you know, uh, about it not being a, a good work atmosphere. And after 10 shows, I said, you know, I have my, I have the money. I don't need this anymore. And it was really getting aggravating. And I was, I, I had one foot out the door already. And I let myself get shoved out the door. I didn't, I wasn't fired. I quit. And, um, and there was some attempt to try to keep me. But uh, I said, you know, fellas, I don't need this. So I left. 